We give thanks to you, Lord, for your faithfulness in our lives, for meeting us where we are. And you know where we are this morning, our needs and our concerns for family, for fathers, and mothers, and children, for sisters and brothers, for medical procedures that await word from the doctors. We pray for those who are sick this morning and carrying heavy burdens. For those who grieve. For those who are lonely. For those worrying about the jobs relationships and difficult decisions meet each one in their needs we pray with healing comfort <coughs> and hope and this morning we also pray with those whose hearts are filled with joy on the other side of surgeries, good news from friends and family, a call from an old friend. We give thanks to you, Lord, for new beginnings and the new beginnings that you make possible. Meet us, Lord, in our difficult times and in our happiness. And strengthen us and help us to be your faithful servants. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our speaker this morning is Daria Hopper. Daria graduated from King College in December of 2009 with a degree in DCOM and Youth Ministry. And after graduating, she interned at International Justice Mission's headquarters in Washington, D.C. as their marketing intern. And within months of that, Daria moved to IJM's office in Manila, Philippines to be their communications intern. After completing her time with IJM, she was hired as the girls ministry director at the Bridge Fellowship a church plant just east of Nashville, and a ministry that has grown from 15 students to 275 students in just four years. Daria is married to Matt Hopper, and they have a one-year-old in motherhood and ministry. Please welcome Daria Hopper. adults uh, disciple students and uh, just really honored to be here with you. I have very special memories of my time at King and um, I just want to take a few moments this morning and just laugh with you and just encourage you. Um, I know that um, college is, is just a difficult time where you're just uh, you're trying to figure out uh, what's going to happen next and so um, I'm honored to be here with you this morning. You know when I, when I think back to my time at King I'm appreciative uh, of a lot of adults in my life who encouraged me. Um, adults like um, uh, Dan Kreis and Dr. Stray and Dale Brown and Dr. Vandenbrake, uh, my coaches that really spent a, a significant amount, amount of time um, teaching me that who I was was more important um, than what I was going to do. Um, probably the majority of you this morning, you feel like you spent um, a lot of your time just being consumed with, with what's next, being the best at everything, um, because because you're studying that, and maybe this morning you're just you're just weary. You're weary of of studying that, of teaching that, of your life being consumed with that. And um, I just want to take a few minutes this morning and, and just encourage you, uh, regardless of where where you are, if you if you love what you do and um, you can't wait to do it, or um, if you're just if you're just tired. Um, Regardless, we live in a very performance 
based culture. And, and our human nature um, tends to find value in how well we do things. Um, men, maybe this morning, um, you, you just think a lot about being the best in your field. Uh, maybe eventually climbing the corporate ladder, uh, being the best at your sport, uh, making the most amount of money, uh, marrying the prettiest girl, um, and, and eventually probably going to continue to just be bombarded with the pressures of, of providing for your family. Um, women, if you're anything like me, just wanting to be the best at whatever you do, um, I think we really struggle with just perfectionism and, and comparison and, and uh, really just being the best, whatever that is, in our career and being the best teacher, the best doctor, or uh, eventually being the best wife, mother. Uh, no matter how much you want to buck the system, you're probably going to always just feel this pressure of being the best. You know, when I, uh, when I was finishing up my time at King, I kind of felt like I'd gotten to the point where I was pretty um, secure in, in what I was going to do next. Um, and maybe that was just arrogance, I'm not really sure, but I kind of got to the point where I felt like, okay, I'm equipped, I'm ready, but, but um, reality sets in and it's not exactly the way uh, you think it's going to go. Um, for example, uh, Dr. Vandenbrink taught me how to send the best email, like the most perfect TCOM email. And in fact, most of my friends now uh, really make fun of me for how professional like even my emails to them are because I sign them and put commas and like everything is perfect and they, and they make fun of me. And I blame Dr. Vandenbrink for that. Um, I blame her that um, I can't just like send a quick email uh, without double checking and spell checking. And that's all, that's all her fault. So um, I feel the pressure of sending the perfect email. Um, no matter how much she prepared me though, there's nothing, she couldn't do anything to prepare me for, um, for working under a supervisor that was just, just a real jerk and the, and the feelings of inadequacy that I was going to feel. Um, nothing could prepare me uh, for motherhood. No matter what classes I took, what I read, um, no one prepared me for, for just how crazy that was going to be. Uh, last week, I made the mistake of Googling um, how to make my strong little daughter drink uh, milk out of a sippy cup. And within about five minutes, the internet had convinced me that I was a failure as a mom and probably had already done something to emotionally scar her forever. Um, I mean, just the feelings of inadequacy are serious. Um, Dan did a lot to equip me to have a successful youth ministry one day, um, but there was nothing he could do to prepare me for the morning that I had to walk into um, a middle school and, and tell um, a seventh grade girl that her mom had committed suicide that morning. There, there's nothing um, that, that you can learn to really prepare you for the realities that life is going to throw your way. And your professors and the people in your life are going to do their best. But no matter what, you're going to be bombarded with just feelings of inadequacy. Um, feelings of, I'm offering my best, but it's not enough. Um, and, and sometimes reality just doesn't play out the way we think um, it's going to. Maybe when you get out of here, just the reality of not having that job that you thought would be offered to you is going to be a lot for you to grapple with. And here's what I want to say to you this morning. Doing good things is really good, but it's not the most important thing. Doing great things is really great, but it's just not the most important thing. Whether it's your sports, your clubs, your classes, your dreams, your goals, your relationships, whatever it is that you really are trying to put your best foot forward, those things are really good, but they're not the most important thing. We're going to look at a story this morning in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. And, and it's a story of three siblings, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And they are um, good friends of Jesus and followers of Jesus. Um, and they actually know that he's the Messiah. And so we're going to see uh, just what he has to say. It's just a short little story. Um, Luke 10, verse 38. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve you alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. The first principle I have for you this morning is that the most important thing is not what you can give to Christ, but what you are given by Christ. 
I spent a lot of time in college thinking about what I could offer Christ, how my life would look like so that I could give the most to Jesus, and a lot of times missed what he could give me. And it's so easy to get here. Like, we see Martha just being so consumed with what she can do for Jesus and what she can do to serve him that she misses the fellowship with him. Um, I probably wouldn't have admitted this uh, in college, but I thought my life was going to play out a little differently. Um, I thought uh, that my, um, my family was, was going to look like this. Um, I thought that we were going to be like, I thought I was going to marry a hipster. You know, he was going to just really encourage my creativity and my passion. And we're going to be this, you know, perfect little, cute little family. Because in my mind, this is how I could offer the most to Christ. In my mind, I saw it going this way because I thought I could offer the most to Jesus if my life looks like this. Um, but this is actually us. Jesus, if you would have been here, 
my brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. Later on, we're going to see um, Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. But she is so she's such a fixer, such the golden child that she even questions Jesus because she says, "If you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died." Martha is just slaving away in the kitchen, trying to offer her best to Jesus, while Mary and Lazarus are just hanging out on the couch, just being lazy, just hanging out with Jesus, while Martha is slaving away. And I, I get this frustration because there are nights that I am cooking dinner and I think, if I have to make one more crock pot meal, I'm going to lose my mind. Like, I'm just absolutely, I do not even know how this responsibility fell on me and why I'm expected to cook every night, but I, like, I'm going to lose my mind. And I'm telling you, I would have been just like Martha and would have marched in there and been like, really, Jesus? Really? Like, I am cooking for you. I am doing everything for you. And you're just going to let, you're going to let Mary and Lazarus just hang out with you. And she was frustrated. She was exhausted. She came out. And I love how Jesus just so lovingly just says, Martha, oh, Martha, you're just so worried about so many things. He, he doesn't come in there and harshly rebuke her. He just says, oh, Martha, you're just worried about so many things. Um, recently, I, I taught uh, in our girls' ministry, uh, was teaching uh, about 150 girls. Just we're kind of walking through uh, the stories of a lot of women of the Bible and taught about a lot of these power women, just women like Mary Magdalene and Esther and Ruth and, and these women that, that just really pursued God with all that they were. And then, you know, I got to Martha and I just had to be honest with the girls. I said, I, I just really need to be honest with you. I wish that my life looked like these women, but, but my life looks like Martha. Like this is a daily struggle for me of just, of, of Christ just saying, oh, sweet Daria, like you, you were just worried about so many things. You know, um, Martha was doing really good things. She was doing really good things. She was serving Jesus her best, but it was just not the most important thing. It just wasn't. Um, she wanted to give her best, but what Christ wanted was her heart. And so what do you need to give to Jesus? You need to invite him into the depths of your soul. Um, I said that we're a very boring couple, and I, and I mean that because um, before we go to bed at 9, we watch reruns of Fixer Upper on HGTV. Uh, every episode goes exactly the same. They find an old house. They, they fix it. They paint it gray. They, paint it, they decorate it with white stuff. Like every single house, exactly the same. Looks exactly the same. And somehow I have been convinced to make my house look exactly the same. So literally in the process of renovating our house with gray walls and boring decorations and like my house, like I did a lot of research on Pinterest. Like I, I really know like my house is going to look like Joanna Gaines decorated it. But here's the thing is when they tell you like, oh, this house just needs a fresh coat of paint. Like that sounds really easy, but I'm hundreds of dollars in and six weeks in and my house still is not completely done with fresh coat of paint. Like. I don't know how they do it in like 12 hours, but I mean, like if I have to paint trim like one more day, it is just, I, I'm going to look, but, but <laughs> and next week my house is going to look like Fixer Upper. But here's the thing about Fixer Upper is that when they go in these old like decrepit houses that are really rough, they don't just go in there and, you know, just paint things and just put pretty decorations on them all. They find all of the problems. They find the foundation issues and the water issues and, and all of the problems of this house to make it sound. And, and that's what I want to tell you this morning is that Jesus doesn't want to just make your life look really pretty. He doesn't want to just um, make you give your best, but he really, really wants your heart. He really wants to get in there and deal with the depths of your soul. So are you offering that to him? Are you offering him, the, you know, the things that you may be doing? They may be good things. They may be really good things, but they're just not the most important thing. And, and, it, and you're going to doubt your value as long as it is placed in what you're doing instead of who you're trusting. And, and all I feel like all through college and just even today, just the daily struggle of waking up and finding my value in what I'm doing instead of who I'm trusting. Am I, do, am I doing my job well enough? Um, am, am I doing well enough in my classes? Am I good enough on my team? All of these are really good things, but they're just not the most important thing. 
if your value is placed in these things that you're doing instead of who you're trusting, um, you're going to come up empty. But I have really good news for you this morning. And the really good news is that in Christ, and there's nothing you have done to make him love you less. And, and that sounds like a really cute statement, but I, I want you to hear it again. Because if you didn't hear anything else, um, this is really good news. In Christ, there is nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there is nothing you have done to make him love you less. And so today, let's choose to rest in the fact that who we're trusting is a lot more important than what we're doing. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you that, that you handle us so lovingly. That so graciously you just say, Daria, you're just, you are worried about so many things. Jesus, would you take those things from us and I pray that we would choose to, to lay them at your altar, God, and, and stop finding our value in, in what we're doing and find our value in who we're trusting. God, I thank you for the good things that all these students, all these professors, God, I thank you for the good things that they do. I thank you for how they are working hard in their classes and on their teams and in their clubs um, in their hobbies, God, for their careers, God, in their relationships. God, I thank you for all the good things that they're doing, but I pray that today that you would help them take a deep breath and trust in what you were doing for them. God, I pray that you would remind them today that who you are is a lot more important than, than what we find our value in. God, I thank you for King and just the journey that, that you've taken them on and, God, how um, you are, are redeeming all things. God, I thank you for um, just the hope and, and the, God, just what you're doing here. God, I thank you for the special memories I have here. I thank you for the adults who, who just poured into my life uh, and helped me um, just, just become a more mature woman. God, I thank you uh, for how you sanctified me through King and, God, how you pointed me um, to your work. God, I thank you um, for the professors in here and, God, just the adults that, um, are, are showing grace and are loving students every day. God, I pray just continue to point students towards you. And God, I pray that, um, God, that you would just live out your purposes in our life. God, we thank you for your help. We thank you for Jesus and the cross and what you've done there. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for letting me be with you.